सततम जानन कालम यमहाद्युते प्रारब्धम अकिलम बुंजन नोद्वेगम कर्तुमर्गसी So he, the author, <coughs> kind of concludes this particular discussion. The discussion was. Mithya is Satyam. There are two types of Mithya in terms of reality. Two types of Mithya. One, what is empirically true is taken wrongly by an individual. This is subjective. That mithya is false. That is what we call false. The word mithya means false there. So an object is taken as another object. Like a shell is taken for silver. One person is mistaken for another. And these as though trees, there are as though trees. This, you know, the, the day trees in your hotel. The day trees, I saw the day trees. Then my problem was, how did they bring the day trees inside? So they might have brought them first and then afterwards started the building. It's, a, it's an atrium. And uh, you have these date trees tall. And the problem was how did they get in? Then I asked our people there. And they, they said, that, you know, Swamiji, you can 
lift them. Lift them along with the roots and, and, and the dirt also along with that. So they will come and plant it here. That's all possible now with all this cranes and whatnot and easy. So they explained this. Then we went and checked up. We checked up this tree also is as though tree. <laughs> it is, <laughs> you know, these days you can get everything without the thing. And so this as though tree. And everything else, there was a waterfall that was false. <laughs> that we arrived at very easily. This one we thought real and this also was false. This is one mithya, false, subjective. Your perception cheated you. And therefore the conclusion was wrong. There is a tree-like thing, it's not tree. So this is subjective. Once you say subjective, the reality of the subjective is what you call objective. Because once you say subjective, then there is objective. This is, this is the samsara. This is our perception. This is, by this alone we have got language. So there is real, there is unreal, as though real. So we have got all these words from this empirical experience. And therefore, these realities are too many. Real objects are too many. Nana. This is called Nana. <clears throat> there is no Advaita. Subject is different, object is different, one object is different from every other object. If you say forms, forms are many and vary. If you take, if you say color, color is many and vary. If you say sound, and that's also many and varied. Smells, tastes and all that, all of them many and varied. Therefore, whatever you objectify is many and varied. That's empirically true. Based upon this truth is our language, right? Now that language we are using to point out what do you think as true is not that true at all. Again, <laughs> it is as though true. One, one as though true. So we have to know one as though true was arrived at by what was true. Then what was construed as true by all and sundry is to be construed as though true. <laughs> it is nothing but an attribute. There is no substantive, because the substantive is only one thing, is, what is self-existent, and everything else draws its being from the self-existent. And the self-existent being is the self-revealing being. Therefore, Satchid Atma alone is self-evident, self-revealing, self-existent, and everything else draws its being from the self-existent, self-revealing. That is also Mithya. This is second Mithya. That is Ishwara Srishti. That is nothing but Ishwara's knowledge. The all knowledge of the same limitless consciousness and with, with all knowledge is possible because of some power that is there and that is what we say Maya. And therefore, so you have to look at this, this, this whole thing, whatever that you confront, is, is Satyam and Mithya. Mithya from the standpoint of what you see, Satyam from the standpoint, if it's not a stand, if it is a standpoint, I don't know, from, from, in terms of reality. Satyam in terms of reality. What do you see, see here, this is Mithya. 
द ट्रूथ ऑफ द सीयर एंड द सीन इज सत्य दिस वन हैज टू कॉन्टम्पलेट अंडरस्टैंड कॉन्टम्पलेट If you don't know, you cannot contemplate upon the fact. What you don't know, you can't contemplate upon. What do you know? For knowledge' sake, you need not contemplate upon. <laughs> unless, unless you once, once you know, why should you need? Why should you require to contemplate? Already you know. So once you know, it is you don't need to contemplate upon. What is known is not. to be contemplated upon in order to gain knowledge because they already known what is not known you cannot contemplate upon who am i <laughs> come on contemplate so how to contemplate so what you can contemplate upon if you don't know so what is unknown cannot be contemplated upon what is known need not be contemplated upon what is this contemplation you are talking about it is in the process of knowing when one is in the process of knowing contemplation is included in the process of knowing so you have an insight and then you what you have insight you contemplate upon to make it real that is allowed therefore Here, here is a verse: "Atmanam satatam janan." Beautiful verse: "Atmanam janan," not satatam janan. "Atmanam janan," <laughs> knowing oneself, no more being ignorant of oneself. "Atmanam janan." सततम कालम नय नय स्पेंड 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 युअर टाइम कालम नय आत्मा जानन सततम कालम नय कैन पुट इट दट वे Satatam kalam nae, seeing the atma, knowing the atma. This is contemplation. So Janan here is seeing, seeing this atma, contemplating upon this atma that you know, that you have come to know, however vaguely. And satatam kalam nae, spend your time always. that is why they take sanyas <laughs> so that you have no roles to play and so you have time satatam kalam nayet nayet kalam nirantaram without a break nayet kalam nayet may one spend one's entire time nayet kalam nirantaram without any interval Means uh, as much time as one can contemplate upon. See, this contemplation is given as also a part of shravanam knowing, as a means to know. Nothing new is gained. It's all old. I told something, everybody laughed. one fellow laughed after one week <laughs> and and even he walks he laughs after one week it is for what i told correct it is my joke it, it took one week for him for the mind to grasp what was going on so that is not a big surprise but this fellow was laughing for my joke correct for whatever i told and therefore whether you understand when the teaching takes place or after some time contemplating upon what what was said and then you understand it is for the teaching only you don't really get anything okay so understanding pramana takes care of it 
And therefore, the teaching takes care of it. And so it takes some time in between. And therefore, the, what is Atma Va Aresh Rotavyaha? Atma is to be listened to. Atma should be listened to. That means what? The Atma vibe. You have to listen. The vibe of Atma. The divine vibe of Atma. And you should listen to people think like that. I tell you, don't, don't laugh. Huh? This is Atma vibe. So you must listen. The Atma sound, divine sound. You have to put on divine. If you hear sound from inside, that is gastric problem. <laughs> but then if you, if you put divine sound, then it's entirely different. You hear some sound, Atma sound. That is one. Then second one is, then Atma sound, then Atma vision, Atma light, divine light. Even today it is, it is going around, this divine light. They press the, they crush the eyeballs, the Guru crush the eyeballs, you see light. Did you see the light? Yes, that, that is Atma light. Hold on to it. They say like that. Huh? Some of you must have experienced that also. <laughs> some, some, some are here, old stalwarts are here. And so the spiritual stalwarts, spiritual stalwart means gone through all this. So different, uh, different forms of experience, different types of techniques. And they are great survivors. <laughs> Really true. I hope they have gone through all that. And so suppose they have to go through now, from now on. <laughs> so, so, I hope that won't be the case, okay? Atma va reshrotavyaha. Atma is to be listened to. Through the Shruti, Pramana, the words themselves, or a means of seeing. Then mantavyaha. Whatever you have understood, you need to you need to purify that. How? Freeing that knowledge from all vagueness, from all doubts. Mantavyaha. You challenge what you know from different standpoints. So many people say so many things. So bring them all. Don't be afraid of any of them because it is knowing. So bring them and then challenge yourself. See if you are true, if the Shastra, the teaching is true, then they are wrong. If they are wrong, you can't simply say you are wrong. You have to see the fallacy in the thinking. Unless you see the fallacy, then your knowledge is not pure. Remove the fallacies. That is called mananam, not reflection. It is mananam, challenging the knowledge from, from the standpoint of your own mind creation or anybody's creation you buy. And you have to see through the fallacy in the argument. Then what you know stays. That's manana. The different types of interpretation of the same sentence, Sattvamasi, by different acharyas, that is Shravanam. <laughs> that is part of understanding the Vakya. Understanding the sentence, that is Shravanam. Different Acharyas, all of them, look at the same sentence and come up with different meaning. And if that, that meaning is, everyone's meaning, is also right, <laughs> that means you are, you, are, you are in for what we call this, this shaking your head without Parkinson. And so, <laughs> You may end up in Parkinson. Yes, you are shaking your head for everything. 
That won't work. We are dealing with knowledge here. And therefore, it is, doesn't allow any, any false notion, wrong notion, error, it doesn't allow because it's not jealous, it is knowledge. Knowledge is true to what is. It cannot be O B T K, A B T K. That is that is your if your brother in law has a contention, you can accommodate him. Okay? If you are somebody is has a contention and you have to live with that person. It is impossible. Well, okay, in the family there is a born again. <laughs> Suppose there is a born one brother is born again. So you have to accommodate him. So he's he's your brother. You should accommodate him. You talk about clouds and talk about other things. <laughs> Don't talk about this topic. Then it will be a problem. You can't have dinner along with him. Therefore, you leave that topic alone and then talk. That is accommodation. That is humanness. And that is not even tolerance. It is just giving him the freedom to have that kind of notion. Even though inside you feel sorry. You pray for him also. Anyway, he is praying for you. <laughs> so, so you pray for him and leave that alone. That is accommodation. Accommodation of a person, not the notion. A funny notion if a person has got, and you may not be able to point out that it is wrong for various reasons, but then in your head it's clear. Therefore, this is a local problem. <laughs> so looking at the sentence from, from different standpoints, each one holds one, one meaning, this is the truth. These are all acharyas, learned people. So through an orientation they look at the sentence. They conclude the truth how it should be, then look at the sentence. And then you eke a meaning out of the sentence. It's all pressure. <laughs> but the approach should be, if that is a pramana, if it is a means of knowing, you have to be open. What does it say? That's how we operate all pramanas. Whatever I see, and it's not that you already conclude, I must see like this. You don't conclude about the object, and you open your eyes and see what is. Knowledge is vastu tantram. It doesn't depend upon your will. It is as true as what is. And therefore, the looking at the Shruti, meaning the teaching, differently to arrive at something else is, is within the Shravanam. Atma Vare Shrotavya, within what we call Shravanam. So, inquiry into the teaching itself. There are people who don't accept the Shruti as a pramana, means of knowledge. Therefore, you should get into their ring and then fight. Their ring. Their ring is what we call reasoning, logic, rational, of course. We have no problem with that. So what we teach is not irrational. Therefore, they are arriving at through reason. So what is the reason? We have to see what is the reasoning. The arguments we have to see. And when you see the fallacy in the reasoning, because if this is right, that has got to be wrong. If that is wrong, you must see. You can't simply say that is wrong, this is right. That, that, is, that is the privilege of a preacher, correct? That is the privilege of a preacher. But that is not the privilege of a seeker, the one who wants to know, a jignasu. So you have to see the... It's not to defeat another person for me to gain 
clarity. All right. Even then, one more word. Nididhyasitavya. It has to be contemplated upon. If necessary. And generally, it is necessary. <laughs> because they always say, Swamiji, I see very clearly, but still. But still, I don't feel. I don't feel I am Ananda. That is a part of learning. <coughs> you won't feel I am Brahman. I won't feel. Every feeling is Brahman. Understand? Every feeling. I don't feel Brahman also is Brahman. Every feeling is Brahman, every experience is Brahman. I don't feel Brahman means this fellow is a mandu. This fellow doesn't know what is Brahman. He doesn't have any idea what it is all about. And he will say, I know Brahman. Brahman is everything, Satyam, I know, I know. But I don't feel. A hey, feeling is Brahman. No, no, it should be good feeling, you know. Hey, hey. Any feeling. Good feeling is you are labeling. Any feeling is valid. What about my feeling sad? That is also Brahman. Feeling sad is Brahman? Yes. That means I am Brahman? Yes. <laughs> I am Brahman? Oh, I am Brahman? Yes. Oh, feeling sad is Brahman? Yes. <laughs> Therefore, I can feel sad now. Yeah, you can feel sad. You understand it? You are Brahman. Limitless Brahman. Feeling sad is limitless Brahman. Are you limitless Brahman or sad? I am sad, I am limitless Brahman. <laughs> what will prevail, tell me? What will prevail? Brahman will prevail. Brahman is Satyam. Sadness is not Satyam. Sadness is Mithya. Huh? Nayet Kalam Nirantaram. That's contemplation. That is called contemplation. Nirantaram nayet. May one spend time always without a break. So one has to sit with oneself. Therefore, Mahadyute he addresses the Jignasu the one who has this commitment to know, oh brilliant one, listen. Prarabdham akilam bunjan na udvegam kartum arhasi. Nayet kalam nirantaram santatam satatam kalam naya. Going through your prarabdha. Your day to day life is dictated by prarabdha. The purushartha is already served. Your purushartha is in contemplation. And there is a prarabdha, means what this body has, has come for. To go through some experiences. And the Prarabdha already started, it is Ishwara Srishti. Correcting your, your own projections is in your hands. <coughs> that is called calling the bluff. Seeing through the mistakes and error. That's in your hands. That I am a limited being subject to all forms of afflictions. That's a conclusion I am subject to. That's a conclusion, a wrong conclusion. In the wake of knowledge, that will go away. And to have that knowledge clear, not only Shravanam, you require Mananam, you require Nididhyasanam, these three go together. Mm 
even while doing shravanam also mananam goes on nidhyasanam goes on when we answer raise a question and answer mananam and we dwell upon the vastu it is nidhyasanam even while shravanam mananam nidhyasanam all of them both of them take place while while exposing to the teaching then individually also you can do and then day to day you have arabdham karma prak arabdham prarabdham already begin to fructify the parentage this all ishwara given parentage given time and place of birth given childhood is given therefore this even unconscious seems to be given <laughs> because parentage is given their abuse of free will or not using disuse of free will due to ignorance due to varieties of pressure they themselves have inherited certain things all this may work in tandem with karma we need not go into that but there is a certain helplessness here because you had no say it's given then afterwards there is also so this prarabdha is getting unfolded every day every day it's getting unfolded sometimes it's very pleasant sometimes it's unpleasant it's getting unfolded you also with your will free will you are shaping also shaping events to happen you make things happen for by your will by your prayer you make things happen or you you make things not to happen or lightly happen what would have taken your head so goes with your crown your hat so like this you can neutralize all this your free will and the free will is fully used the purpose is served once you gain this jnanam but still the prarabdha will continue because this is ishwara srishti the stars will continue the sun will continue therefore the planets will continue the earth will continue your neighbor will continue your body will continue and if you have got some back pain that also will continue after gnani back pain back will not go away <laughs> back pain will continue head will continue and then sinus trouble will continue and headache will be there now and then sab this all prarabdha this is ishwara srishti within the srishti you can bring about some changes if there is headache you can neutralize it you can get rid of it within the ishwara srishti there is a cure for it herbal or any any cure there is a cure for it within the ishwara srishti so that will continue so you can't ask how long it will continue <laughs> that's not an issue you don't have a problem anymore you are free already so i i, I am i am free i am brahman but how long should i have this body what is the problem a hey, body you are happy already you are free from being unhappy you are you are the whole yeah 
But uh, why should I have this small body? No? We should you not have. We should you not have. Then only you can get up, I told you. So you can get up and do something. <laughs> this body is a blessing. I don't want to have rebirth. So many others also don't want you to have rebirth. <laughs> and they will <laughs> It's not, a, it's not a big issue. <laughs> if there is a rebirth, we'll take care of it, okay? That's not an issue. In this birth, what we have accomplished, that is issue. What is there for you? If there is a birth, we'll see. Another time means another fun. We'll look into that when it comes, okay? Don't worry about this. Suppose I'm reborn. You will study Vedanta again. <laughs> how, gee, how many times I, I, I have to study? Every time you are born, you will study. Suppose I am born a frog. Pray. I should not be born a frog. If I am born a frog, I should be born in India, not in Vietnam. Huh? In India, frogs are left alone. <laughs> they don't come to the plates. <laughs> so what I say, it's not... <coughs> if you want all that, we will give you... <laughs> Who will be born? Jiva is born and again, again and again. As long as he is there in every creation, you will be there. And the Jiva already has discovered, I am Ishwara. I am free. And therefore, all the karmas which account for a given body are resolved. Only this body will continue until it run, runs its course. The momentum gained has to run out. That is called prarabdha. This will continue. And therefore going through one's prarabdha karma, whatever it is, if one has to do something, one does. If one has to sit under a tree, one will do. Will do that. Prarabdham, bunjan. Bunjan means experiencing, going through the experience of prarabdha. Nayet kalam nirantaram. Udvegam na kartum There is nothing for you to feel pressured. I must get my moksha, I must get my moksha. Don't create new pressure, moksha pressure. Relax. <laughs> because already you are free. You have to see clearly. It's a question of growing clarity. Don't sit by the by, by the side of the rose plant and pressurize the plant. Come on, come on, bloom. There is one rose bud. Swami is coming home. You want to give from this pot, this plant, one rosebud to Swami. Swami is coming. Tomorrow is coming. No, you have not bloomed. You take your own time. How long you will take? Come on. 
bloom, bloom, bloom. It takes its own time. Slowly, silently, after Swami comes and goes, <laughs> it blooms. That is blooming. And before it blooms, this person plucks it and then opens it <laughs> with God-given fingers, you know. <laughs> not good enough. God-given fingers are not good enough as God's own fingers. They have to, it has to open. So, Udvayagam na kartumar khasi. Don't pressurize yourself. You don't need to pressurize yourself. Take it easy. What a nice, eh? It's very understanding. Vedanta is always very understanding discipline. Because you are already free. You don't need to pressurize you. The more you pressurize means you more you away. Come on. What command? You are not asking Atma to be Atma. It is already free. It won't even understand what are you talking. You are asking Atma, you be Atma, correct? You Atma, you be Atma, you be Brahman. What is it you are talking? Atma will be surprised, what? So Atma is not going to be convinced by what you say. They think, what, crazy? Are you crazy? So, you have to ask your mind, come on, get the Atma, get him. So, <laughs> silly. You are already free. What, what makes you think otherwise? Take care of that. Yeah. <laughs> so, let the clarity grow. Utpanne Pyatma Vijnane Prarabdham Naiva Munjati Iti Yat Shruyate Shastre Tannira Kriyate Duna Certain things we call prakriya. Certain things we say, in order to teach the method of teaching is called prakriya. It's only a method. It is based upon a certain, a certain problem that exists now due to not knowing. So that's, therefore any, any method that we employ to tell the truth in order to solve the problem is provisional, it has no, it has no reality. One thinks, one has a problem. If I say you don't have a problem, I don't understand. <laughs> so, th that, that the person doesn't have a problem may be true. If I say, you don't have a problem, you are already what you want to be, and then send him away. <laughs> Some people do that. 
you know yourself, you'll be all right. They think it's a great teaching. We don't, we don't think so. That's not teaching. Therefore, you have to accept the problem, however illegitimate it is, and then solve a problem that doesn't exist, <laughs> as though there is one. That's compassion. You can't, you can't beat it. And within that problem, if that problem is universal, there is a certain logic. And that is Ishwara Shrifti. In the Ishwara Shrifti itself is included all these problems. And Srishti also is born of that problem. <laughs> From the standpoint of the problem, not understanding what is what. Therefore, we have a certain prakriya. This prakriya is valid within Ishwara Srishti, which is Mithya. And it is a prakriya within the srishti. Like hunger is a problem, food is a problem, food is the is the solution, and both are mithya. <coughs> like that in Ishra Srishti, we have a prakriya. This is what we call karma and karma phala. And Adrishta, and Janma, and Marana, and Janma and Marana in Sanskrit. You have a free will, and you can abuse your free will against what you know as Dharma, real. Dharma means what is universally accepted by common sense. Common sense born knowledge that I don't get hurt, I don't want to get hurt, and others also don't want to get hurt. We know that is Dharma. And every other value is based upon that Dharma. And so we, we mean to conform, conform to the dharma in all of our actions. And one, if one goes against the dharma, then that is a papa karma, not sin. It's a wrong action which will produce a result, known and unknown. Unknown means unseen. Unseen result, adrishta. Seen result here, one can escape from the seen result like, a, like imprisonment, getting caught. But the unseen will be credited to one's account. That cannot be, that cannot be escaped. That is law. That is law of karma. Within, within the srishti, within what is given. Like gravitation is a force given. Like every other law that is there, this law of karma also is given. Then the shastra, this is all given by the shastra, the teaching book itself. And if you reach out to somebody and do something, that will produce punya, positive. And therefore, 
that also will be credited to your account. They will translate into experiences both unpleasant and pleasant, respectively. And if they don't this, they bear the fruits here in this life, they will be carried over. And we have enough carried over karma in our account. <laughs> because the jiva is anadi, beginningless. <coughs> Therefore, there is, there, are, there is a big bank, karma bank, in each one's account, countless. Countless birth, countless karma. Once you say beginningless, there is no, there is no <laughs> countability. Therefore, karma for every form of life, everybody has got. That is why, out of the possibilities of janma, yonis, there are many possible yonis. One can be a frog, one can be an octopus. Everybody has got karma to be an octopus, to be a snail, and to be a eel, and to be a, to be to be a crab, and to be fish, this fish, that fish, and everybody has got karma combination. There is no death for it, and all are clamoring to fructify. Silencing all of them, certain karmas precipitate from the karma bank to order for a human body. We say, Narajanma Durlabham. <laughs> that is why we say, Narajanma Durlabham Jantu Naam. Every other possibility is pushed down, Narajanma is gained. Because in that Janma, in that birth alone as a human being, there is free will, there is uninhibited consciousness about oneself. And the self is consciousness. And therefore your faculty is free. And therefore you can make a self-judgment. And the self-judgment can be wrong. That's called freedom. What you can abuse is freedom. What if you can commit a mistake, that's freedom. <laughs> and that can be corrected is freedom. And dying away with a mistaken notion of oneself is blowing the chinma, <laughs> blowing an opportunity. Freedom is there, but you blow the freedom. In American words, okay. <laughs> very effective sometimes. <laughs> and therefore, you have karma. In your name, from this janma also, Whatever you gather, it's all kept in suspense to be fulfilled here or carried over to Sanchita Karma. And from there again you have to go by what is next. Understand this? <laughs> Clean accounting. What you gather is not immediately spent. It goes to the main account and from there you draw. <laughs> and therefore, in this life, whatever you gather, the karma is called agami.
and whatever you have in your deposit, term deposit, waiting for maturity, different types of karma again, and therefore karma combination. What a human body can give you, no other body can give. Correct? What the what a crab's body will give you. No other body will give that experience. The crab world is entirely different. The crab experience. Ask the crab eater. <laughs> Therefore, what I say, <laughs> that is a different type of crab experience. Okay. So this, this is each every set of karma waiting for that given incarnation. Therefore, even small insects, it's waiting. Then, though the evolution is only, if it is there, it is only at this biological level and all that. Jiva fulfills a certain type of karma through that body. Therefore, there is no question of Jiva evolving. Jiva will take whatever that is available on this earth, that particular body, karma, exhausted. Therefore, in the previous janma, if someone was a house fly, in this janma he will be a human being. Okay? Thank God he doesn't remember all that. And therefore, uh, he will come and sit upon my nose. And so this, uh, no, no, then afterwards he say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I remembered my past life. Uh, for so this is... <laughs> So this is all, it's all cumbersome. And therefore, we don't remember all that previous life, thank God. And so, this from these karmas, certain karmas fructify into a particular life and they get, they get expanded, that karma gets unfolded over a period of time. It may be hours for certain jantus, certain life forms, it may be days, it may be months, it may be years. A turtle lives hundred years. One hundred years. There is an old turtle here in the pond. And in summer it goes up somewhere and then comes every time we see them having a walk. So at least we know that's 22 years. And before that they must, <laughs> it must have, because already it was a big turtle when we first saw it. And so how many years we don't know. So it gets, it gets unfolded over a period of time. When that is over, again another body has to come. That is why you require a certain grace to have a human body. Because in the human body, there is no inhibition to consciousness. Understand this. There is no inhibition to consciousness. Only ignorance can make you commit mistakes. That also is there in consciousness. And therefore, one can correct the mistake. Faculty is given. Pramana is available. You need a means of knowing and that is also there. The urge to be free from being small is there. Free from being unhappiness is there. And therefore, what else you need? <laughs> Enough faculty, you can figure out a lot of things. What I do is not what I should do. <laughs> but that you have got enough faculty. You don't need a scripture for that. 
So that I am Ishwara, that require you require teaching and that's available. And therefore, until one knows the truth about oneself, until one knows the truth about oneself, one, one has to go through what we call once, once Sanchita Karma, <laughs> called Sanchita, one has got to go through, through rounds of birth and death. You will have so many, and you have to wait for your human birth. <laughs> there again, you should be born in a place where <laughs> It is a possible opportunity is open to you. So you can be born anywhere. You must have that opportunity. And then you must be able to pursue. And that is what we call prarabdha karma. Out of sanchita, a certain set of karmas have fructified in a human body if this is arabdam, prarabdam. And it is in the process of getting unfolded. In this life, whatever is gathered, certain, certain karmas get themselves fructified in this life itself. Certain adrihtas. Because we do prayer, etc., for neutralizing some of our problems. And they must rectify now, not in the near future, <laughs> in the later life. It has they have to rectify. We want these things to rectify here. They rectify. Certain karma palas cannot be rectified here. They go and join. Later to the Sanchita Karma. You understand now, therefore, there is Prarabdha. The Prarabdha belongs to Jiva, the one who is born, one who is subject to the notion that I am a Karta, I am the doer, subject to guilt, I am the Bhokta. I am the enjoyer, experiencer of karmapala and therefore subject to hurt also. So that I am subject to guilt and hurt, that fellow is called jiva, who does and who experiences. When the jiva is falsified, in the wake of knowledge, utpanne jnane, bhijnane, when the knowledge has taken place, I am no more jiva, but still the body continues, the mind senses continue, the complex continues, and that is because of prarabdha in Ishra Shrishti. And the previous, that notion that I am a jiva, karta, bhokta, yes, a wrong notion, that can be corrected, that is jiva Shrishti. within the Ishwara Shrishti. That can be corrected. Even though I, Atma, is free from Jivatvam, because the body, mind, sense, complex continues, Jivatvam continues, called Bhadita Jivatvam, sublated Jivatvam, enlightened Jivatvam. The Jiva is enlightened. So prarabdha continues, we say, until it exhausts, the person is called jivan muktaha. Living he is liberated free. 
So this contention is from a standpoint, from the Atma standpoint, there is no Jivan Mukta, <laughs> there is no Prarabdha, there is only Satyam Jnanam Anantam Brahma. Understand? That is only from a standpoint. From the reality standpoint, there is no Prarabdha, there is no Agami. You know, this is a, this is a particular vision and that is being talked about. He says, I am talking about this. We will see. <laughs> Tomorrow. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamada Chate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vachishyate Om Shanti Shanti Arihi Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha Arihi Om